Here, what you doing, man? I'm tasting his solder. It fermented too much, man. Whoa. I wanted to end up at. I wanted it to go to 18% and finish sweet. It fermented dry. It's 22. That's like Jeff Hill, dude. Yeah, that's that's been aging for almost nine months now. Hmm. So what are you gonna do with it? Well, it's already went to 22. Why not see if we can go higher? Hey, that would make a great video, wouldn't it? That would. So, so we can't distill because that's illegal in the United States. Yeah, you can't distill. I, I wonder if they, I wonder if there's a way to like see when when you distill, you remove all the alcohol and save it, and then you leave all the flavor and the water behind. I wonder if there's a way to remove the water but have the flavor and the alcohol remain. You know, I read something somewhere involved freezing. Like freeze concentrating? I think so. Somewhere. Jacking? Isn't that how you make Applejack? The history of Applejack dates back to the first settlers in the New World. Early American colonials had grown used to drinking beer or wine with their meals, especially because water was often unsafe to drink in Europe. But after arriving in America, it was too expensive and dangerous to transport large quantities of beer or wine from Europe. The British provided a supply of rum from the Caribbean, but when taxes were raised too high, Americans started looking for other options for their spirits. Early American farmers had something on all of their farms. Apples. Apples grow naturally in the United States, and they were plentiful. Early settlers pressed the apples and let them ferment, resulting in cider, America's first spirit. It was the harsh winters of New England that turned that hard cider into Applejack. Applejack gets its name from the apples, of course, but also from the jacking process. Jacking, or freeze distillation, involves freezing the cider and removing the ice from the mixture, which increases the alcohol content. This jacking process came about when the early settlers left their cider out in the cold and then removed chunks of ice from the spirit. The more ice that was removed, the higher the alcohol content, which made Applejack much stronger than cider. We're not really sure if it's legal to freeze concentrate anything. So we're just going to assume that it is and say, don't, don't do freeze. it. <laughs> we're not going to do it. So don't you do it either. Okay, so the basic idea with freeze concentration. Oh, don't do that. Good call, good call. Don't do it. <laughs> End of video. Okay, so the basic idea is you want to freeze all of this and then submerge it over another container and leave it like that for a couple of hours. All the alcohol and flavor will drain out and only the water will remain. When it's done, this will be full of ice and it'll look like snow. It will be pearly white, like that white. That's how you know it's ready. And then you gotta freeze it again. You usually gotta freeze it two, three, maybe four times sometimes. So we got here our nice circular fermenter and a bucket. You know why I like this fermenter so much? What? Among many reasons. It's, it's got a small opening. So we're gonna wrap that into here. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna put it in the freezer. So it's not going to freeze. But if it does freeze spontaneously, we're going to just put it upside down on top of the bucket. I'm going to leave that there for a couple of hours. All that yummy goodness and alcohol flavors is going to slowly trickle down into the bucket. And uh, we might get a gallon, one or two gallons will get out of it. And then in here, it's going to be pearly white snow. And then melt it drain it, whatever. You're gonna pour that back into here. And then not throw it in the freezer. And we're not gonna freeze it again. Once it's not frozen again, we're gonna turn it upside down into our bucket. And if and it spontaneously it freezes and... If it somehow weirdly spontaneously freezes, and uh, eventually you'll get to a point where it won't freeze anymore. When it won't freeze, you're done. And with your typical household freezer, you can usually go from between 35 to 40 percent. 
I mean, in theory, I don't know, I've never, I would never do this, but in theory, you could go to 35, 40 percent. So technically, if you lived in Alaska and you just put out storage shed, you could make some pretty stout stuff. I don't know the actual temperatures, but uh, water freezes at a, lo at a lower temperature. Yeah, water freezes at a lower temperature than alcohol. Yeah, which is so, why uh, the alcohol flows to the bottom. So you want to, yeah. So you want to get your freezer set to, yeah, you know, above the freezing temp or below the freezing temperature for water, but above the freezing temperature for alcohol. So your water will freeze alcohol won't. Turn it upside down in your bucket, let it drain out, keep on freezing it till it won't freeze no more, and you got you some 35% apple cider. Now, of course, we're not gonna do that, and neither should you. Eric, what you doing, man? Getting a pizza. Oh, good idea. Grab the popcorn, too. And beer? Absolutely.